In today's episode of the Powerfunk Presents podcast, I'm here with Abhishek Zen. He's the co-founder and CEO uh, at Number 8. And today we're going to be basically learning all about, you know, how Number 8 is looking at user context, uh, leveraging AI and sensors and mobile devices to just drive growth. And today we're going to be, yeah, curious to learn what Number 8 is all about in detail and who is actually benefiting most from it. So welcome to the show, Abhishek. Good to meet you, Lucas, and hope you're safe wherever you are. <laughs> Thank you. Likewise. Um, yeah, give us that 360 overview. What is number eight all about? Sure. Uh, number eight is a mobile contextual data platform. And uh, what does that mean? So it means uh, we are operating the mobile advertising space initially. So we leverage sensors from mobile devices, be it smartphones, watches, glasses, so on and so forth. And we tr convert all of these raw sensory data that are present into contextual moments. So you know what, what is Lucas doing at a given point in time? Are you working, relaxing, commuting? These are moments that we can predict using our AI software that runs on the device. And then we can also then package them into audiences. Very importantly, all of this happens on the devices I mentioned, and it's ID list. There is no identifier associated. So all the, you know, all the news you would have heard about cookies and IDs going away, et cetera, it doesn't affect us. And if anything, this is the future of what mobile advertising will be looking at, but doesn't rely on IDs and it's actually privacy conscious as well. So that's what we are building at number eight. Super, super interesting. Maybe tell us a little bit about, um, you know, what types of and what types of scenarios is that contextual understanding uh, sure. especially beneficial? Like, is there, you know, is that specific types of ads companies that are using, you know, sure. maybe tell us about how the uses actually turn out. To be. Sure. Uh, our customers are actually going to be the likes of, so apps or mm -hmm. other ad tech providers who have other, you know, who already have their software in their, in other apps as well. So what we would do is, that, let's say, for example, Nike as a brand would want to reach joggers to sell a new pair of sneakers. We would facilitate joggers as an audience for Nike, but we want to see have any IDs associated with it. So that you, from the user side, there is no IDs being shared. So there's no identity be actually shared. Mm -hmm. But Nike as an advertiser gets value. That, oh, I can read joggers who are not just habitual joggers, but who are also jogging right now, who just finished a run and so on and so forth. This is what we call as unbiased behavioral data that doesn't mm -hmm. rely on for surveys. And you know, you think of from a marketing point of view, a lot of data still comes from panel surveys and user feedback studies. Yeah. Behavioral data is completely unbiased. And that's in essence what we are facilitating with our solution for the marketing and ad techs. Uh, super interesting. I mean, in the show, it's been recently coming up, obviously, quite a lot, right? The cookie-less world is in front of our door um, and mm -hmm. interesting solutions. Um, that tackle any type of challenges that are there at, at, at that space are super interesting. So, okay, makes complete sense. You're getting a behavioral understanding, contextual understanding, and then there is basically user groups of specific yep. interests, it sounds like, yep. uh, that uh, would be, okay, very cool. Um, I mean, who is, who's reaching out to you guys? Like, you know, which type of, uh, is that, you know, like growth marketers that like a CMO, like who is saying, or is that even founders that would, you know, reach out It to depends guys? on the size of the company, of course. Uh, a few players who are early stage, it'll be the founders and CEOs and CTOs reaching out to us. And sometimes what will happen is that uh, directors of product or strategy directors from media agencies, because we have different sectors of the market that we look at, either it's apps or it's going to be ad tech providers or media agencies. For media agencies, it's primarily going to be strategy directors who attend a lot of online webinars, events, conferences. For ad tech people, it'll be directors of product and or heads of monetization. And from publisher side, it's going to be new product development or product areas. So that's a three or four different personas of people who usually reach out to us. And, and how do they learn about number eight? Like what's sort of the main acquisition channels that you guys have been successful with right. and also the ones that you're sort of excited moving forward? Got it. Yeah, that's, that's a very good point. You know, we had a study on traction channels, which one actually makes sense. So the ones we're, uh, the ones we're actively focusing on, given that it's a B2B solution. So we look at Sponsoring conferences, that's very important for us because so whether we sponsor talks, panels, et cetera, we invite other guests as well. That's one. Mm -hmm. The other one we're looking at very heavily is community engagement. So we engage in the ad tech community or in the broader advertising and marketing community. And thirdly, we're looking to get into content marketing. It's, it's still early days because mm -hmm. our, our website's going through a revamp right now. So in the next month and a half, you'll see a brand new flashy website coming up so we're quite excited for the launch uh yep so those cool. are the three main channels that we're uh, seeing a lot of inbound from and, and what role i mean you mentioned the website there you as a 
um, you know, as a founder, you have a lot of things on, on the plate, obviously. Like, yep. what role does the website play in your mind? Like, I mean, you're doing a revamp at the moment, but, you know, what, yep. what role do you see for it? That's a very good point. You know, uh, the website, the reason why we're going to be investing in content marketing, because the technology we're bringing out is very new to the market. You know, the whole idea of being able to target and reach people in the moment and on-device solutions, idealists, that's very new for the entire marketing world, really. I mean, if you think of what advertising been used to. So there's an element of masterclass videos and content that we want to put out on the website that will just be education, really. So that's where we want to almost have like people come to our place to learn about how is edge computing going to impact your privacy first advertising campaigns? How are you going to do idealist campaigns? How are you going to run on mobile in-app campaigns? All these things we want to basically give information because there's so much to actually share because and given the confusion in the market as well right now. So yeah. That makes sense. No, I could I could clearly see, for example, it's interesting. Um, it's been a theme a little bit on the show where when there's something very innovative, the challenge yeah. tends to be sometimes, for example, you mentioned the ID list, right? Like for many yeah. people, that immediately kicks off the question, then yeah, what else are you guys doing? Right? Like absolutely. You know, you know, it's, a, it's interesting. We were speaking at a conference, a uh, couple I was speaking at a conference from IAB Canada uh, a few days back, and we had people from agencies or strategy directors reaching out that exact same question saying, what does this idealist thing mean exactly? You know, I don't know what it means. So we're having meetings with them next week to say, all right, this is what idealist really means is how it's being used in, pra in practice today. So yeah. yeah. Makes sense. Super interesting. Okay, cool. Um, nice. Um, I'm curious. I mean, what, what do you personally think? I mean, you mentioned the cookie-less future yourself. Like, mm -hmm. what do you think should should marketers be doing at the very moment to be just ready? I mean, for, for many, especially, you know, we speak to a lot of lead gen marketers here. For many, it's still like kind of far ahead, uh, you know, even though we're talking yeah. about next year. Uh, like how, what do you think about that? What should they do? So I'll just caveat that by saying we're in the in-app space. So cookies is, is not really mm -hmm. for, for in-app. It's already happened. Because mm -hmm. Apple released the changes last year. So if you think, think of all mobile iOS inventory that goes out for ad requests, there's probably a 25%. You know, if you have an iPhone user, you know, you'll probably see the pop-up on your iOS device say, allow or not allow tracking. Mm -hmm. But 75% of all ad requests don't contain IDs today. So there's going to be a big drop in the market where all of a sudden advertisers will be like, oh, shoot, I can't target people anymore. Mm -hmm. And what, what's happened for, you know, for customer acquisition campaigns, social campaigns have shot up the roof in terms of pricing. Facebook campaigns have gone up, Twitter campaigns have gone up, Snapchat's gone up, why? Because it's a supply demand thing. If you have limited supply of ID traffic, the demand for it goes up, so price goes up. Yeah. So idealist is going to, I mean, you have first party data, idealist, that's, it's, you'll see 2020 to 2020, that'll be, that'll be like the word in the street, along with contextual, you're probably hearing a lot of contextual targeting on the market right now. Yeah. so yeah very cool very nice appreciate that um okay so let's switch gears a little bit and get to know you a little bit better because obviously you've been part of a very inter innovative and interesting company um i'm curious there's a lot of content out there that you could consume and while you you know mm -hmm. also you have a, you wear a lot of hats obviously like you know where where do you read like what is the places that you still spend time you know reading and educating given the limited time that's probably available yeah uh one of the things i really do is i you know, I don't use any social media. And unfortunately, LinkedIn is the only form of social media that I use, but I'm just looking at companies to see what kind of, where is the industry sort of headed, at least mm -hmm. in, the, in the marketing and ad tech space. And where is our edge really happening? And almost trying to see, always guessing ahead. So one of the things that, like one of the very early decisions that we've made was to do all of our processing on device. That saves a ton of data, you know, regulations, liability that you can have because all of a sudden you don't have to send any personal data to the cloud. The burden that you're overcoming from a par customer and partner point of view is massive. And that's where you'll see. So that's a, a significant portion of time is, I mean, I have a whiteboard sitting right next to me. It's just a dump of my brain right now. It's just <laughs> words. <laughs> so there's a lot of time that goes into just thinking and then reading up on industry reports mm -hmm. and also the product to see, you know, what kind of things will resonate in the, in the market today. So those are three or four things. Very good. I have some rapid fire questions for you to wrap it All up right. for the interview. Let's you ready this. for this? Yeah. Yep. Very good. What's the last book you read or the last podcast you listened to? Last book I read. Ah, oh, jeez. I have to look at my Audible. 
Jeez, uh, it's it's not really rapid fire anymore, is it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, hold on. I, it would be. Da, 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 da. Shoe dog, by mm -hmm. Phil Knight. Mm -hmm. What's yep. one single thing your company is focused on the most at the moment? Right now, it's production deployment. If there would be first, no, yeah, good. Uh, with the customers that we've gone live with, so that's the main focus right now. If there would be no boundaries in tech, so everything is possible, what's the one thing you would fix for your role today? Ooh, somehow magically give me 24, 25 hours in a day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what's the last thing that kept you awake at night about the company? Production issues. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> And if we go back all the way to University of Waterloo, just getting all the way back. Um, mm -hmm. Now you're heading, you're doing your first steps into your career, right? You've been in engineering, you've been obviously founding and in the founding world. Um, what's the one advice you would give yourself for your journey? I think keep exploring because I've, so, so I was born in India, raised in Canada, worked in the States, then I studied again in the Netherlands, then I came to the UK. So I've just, been a mini explorer of sorts so keep exploring and that's been very helpful for me uh just building up social networks throughout so yeah i would definitely suggest anyone coming to university to take that chance and not just stay in the city where you are just from a point of security and comfort so yeah very cool i wish i really appreciate you you took the time with us today to be a guest on the show i want to give Likewise. you the very last i want to give you the very last word if somebody forgets uh, all that we discussed about number eight what's the one thing that they should remember for any mobile marketers out there, if you're doing in-app targeting and you just want to learn what is idealist, how is this going to impact the business? Uh, how is this ecosystem going to look like and how it's going to be evolving the next 18 to 24 months? Feel free to reach out to me by email. My email is abishakunumbrate.ai. Uh, yeah, I would love to have a chat. Thanks a lot. Cool. Thanks so much, Lucas.